My name is Niana. I am with the Chicago Northwest um, Field Office and welcome to our show, Social Security Broadcast for the CAN TV. And today I have John Marshall. I'm the Chicago Metropolitan and Northern Indiana Area Working Centers Coordinator for the Social Security Administration. And we're happy you are joined us today. Um, today we will be discussing online services, retirement, uh, applying for retirement, Medicare, and disability online. Um, if you have any questions while we are broadcasting today, uh, you can call us at 312-738-1060 and we can try to answer all the questions you, you have for us today. Um, so to start, we're going to go to our website. Um, you would want to put in www.ssa.gov and on there you will see on the home page um, for our online services. That's where again you can apply for the retirement benefits, apply for the Medicare or replace your Medicare cards, you can apply for the disability and if you want to scroll down a little further you can also create your My Social Security account. Um, in creating your My Social Security account, uh, once you set up your My Social Security, you can go ahead and then see your earnings throughout the years. You can go ahead and uh, do a benefit estimate of your benefits if you want to know what you'd receive at your early or full retirement age. Um, you can replace your Social Security card. Um, so there are a lot of um, options that you can do while you have your My Social Security account. Um, but in regards to applying for benefits, if you go to www. At SSA and you're thinking about retirement or you want to retire you can go to the site you can click the retirement tab and then you can go to the application it's not it's pretty self-explanatory for the application uh, but you go through it and then once you're done you could get your receipt page and you could keep for your records just to uh, make sure if there are any questions or if you um, haven't heard anything about your application you have your receipt page. And going back to the website, um, you can click this tab if you want to estimate your benefits and then you want to have an idea kind of what you would receive um, for your benefit. You can just click the retirement estimator and then you can calculate your benefits based on your actual uh, earnings record. So this is a really good tool to, to have for you. There are a fax um, tab you can click and it's frequently asked questions on that fax tab and then if you're you you know you have questions and it's similar to former questions that was asked you can just click here and it gives you ideas about the website about retirement disability medicare and the um um the my social security my social security account um, so, what, what, what would you say about our website? What's handy dandy about our, our Social Security website? Well, what, what, there's a lot of things on there that you can, you can do without ever having to go mm -hmm. into a Social Security office. You can change your address, especially if you have a My Social Security account. Mm -hmm. you, can, um, you, know, you can change your address, you can get a new Medicare card. One of the new features that we have on My Social Security is, is uh, my wage re my wage report yes. um, on on that on that site and what it does is that if you're working and you're receiving social security disability insurance or um, or so or supplemental security income you can go in there and actually report your mm -hmm. wages every time you get a pay stub yeah and so when you get the pay stub you just um you literally go on to the go on to the website click on my wage report and put in all the information that's on there the the pay period beginning and, and ending date the pay date mm -hmm. the um uh, the gross wages the um you know the and and everything else that's on the as, that's on your pay stub and you get a report and you are also able to get a receipt when you get when you when you make a report what we do with that information is that we take it and we apply it to your to your record to make sure that the, um, that your your payments get paid correctly and on time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Now, Mr. Marshall, say someone, um, like they're not having benefits, but they do want to create your their account because they just don't want to go into the office because they need their Social Security card. Yeah. And they want to apply for their Social Security card. What's an alternative way if they don't want to go into the office for their Social Security card? They can go on to my Social Security, doc, mm -hmm. my, my Social Security dot gov and and literally apply for their apply for their social security card and now for first time social security card applications you must visit the social security office yeah. and with the original birth certificate mm -hmm. as well as identification mm -hmm. a lot of times social security card is needed for children however in order for a parent to apply for a child who mm -hmm. what uh, was social security record is already established we'll need the following in order to replace the tr the, the child social security card mm -hmm. on, along with parent identification if the child is from zero to um, zero to four years old, um, we accept the, the, the following for identification purposes. Um, uh, for, you know, like a, a like a birth certificate, mm -hmm. and um, sometimes we get we could use um, in, um, medical uh, mm -hmm. medical cards. Mm -hmm. We can use um, life insurance. It, um, um, mm -hmm. Anything that really uh, ultimately identifies the, the the individual. The same thing um, for children between five and seventeen. Sometimes we could use a school record mm -hmm. that shows that the, you know shows the individual's name. And then remember, the birth certificate and uh, proof of identity are two different things. Mm -hmm. One is a is a proof of birth and where we're going to try to you know basically it's a proof of your age and the other one is to, for us to try to identify you as the individual and for persons 18 years or older we, we normally re that'll take most of the identify um, most of the identif identifications that you normally would have like a um, like a state ID or a driver's license um, things like that mm -hmm. that could be that could be used as your as an identifier. Mm -hmm. That that was a, a, a abundant amount of information. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. That is totally correct. But the rule of thumb and and that's true for if you want to come in and you want to place a, a, a replacement for a child, but you want to be sure if you're creating the my social security account um, any persons 17 and under uh, we wouldn't be able to replace a social security card via the internet our website you have to come into the office with like mr. Marshall said with some um, identification for the child a life insurance policy a certified medical record um, a certified school record so on and so forth um, but the my social security account is for persons 18 above um, who's not making any changes so if you have to change your address if you need to change your name if you need to update your citizenship you would not be able to do it on our on the my social security account you would have to come into the office so if you just want a straight replacement card and there are no changes to your record no date of birth change anything like that you can ha use it with the valid driver's license state id or passport uh, to replace your social security card um, but yeah like mr marshall said any of the other identification for the minor you would be able to bring that information into the office um, the minor does not have to be with you as long as you have um, the certified record and we can go ahead and replace your card so that was a lot thank you mr marshall that was a lot of information um, now one of the mm -hmm. other things that you could you could do on mm -hmm. a my social security uh, account without having a having having been Mm -hmm. is to request um, your earnings and yes. request a, a, a record of your, of your earnings mm -hmm. and they try to get an idea of exactly you know where you stand in terms of your earnings and how you know and, and where you stand in terms of uh, being being insured and also you you can get a, um, a benefit estimate mm -hmm. of what you know what your benefits could potentially be once you retire or if you have become if you become disabled mm -hmm. so um, ultimately you there's and there's a number of different calculators that can you can use to get a, a pro, uh, approximate mm -hmm. estimate for of, of a you know what type of um, benefit you might receive if, once you start receiving Social Security um, benefits. Right. And and so, Mr. Marshall, I have a question for you. So, what if someone uh, create their My Social Security account with the www.ssa.gov, mm -hmm. and they look at their earnings record and they see some years are missing, mm -hmm. and they know they've worked and they have their W two or their self employment tax return but it's not showing up on their social security earnings record what would they do well they could contact the social security administration contact our office and could they and they can um, 
um, they could either come into the office set up mm -hmm. an appointment to, 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 to come into the office to see someone or you know sometimes they, we can do things over the phone mm -hmm. but how, however it's with something like that if you have something missing in your in your earnings record it's best to bring um, bring the the proof that you mm -hmm. have into the office so that we can we can look at it and see if we have enough information in order to correct your record if we don't have enough information we might have to contact the employer itself mm -hmm. and and be able to be able to determine whether um, there's a correction that needs to be made to your earnings record. Okay. Thank you. That's, that is very true. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. So um, we've talked about the earnings record. We've talked about creating the My Social Security account. Now we want to shift and we want to talk about uh, those who are receiving the retirement and disability benefits as well as the SSI. Um, it's really good to also create your My Social Security account. So if you want to make changes, especially with the retirement or Medicare or disability, Social Security disability benefits, such as your address change, your telephone number change, um, direct deposit. What would someone do do in that instance? If they don't want to come into the office, they call and they like, oh, the wait time is <laughs> <laughs> astronomical. Mm -hmm. Is there an alternative uh, reporting um, they can do to report their updates of their contact information? Yes, they can literally go on uh, mysocialsecurity.gov my, my and either either contact us through the, um, they could contact us through the 800 number, mm -hmm. through one 800 7 Seven two one two one three, mm -hmm. and give us um, and give us a change of information. Or if they have a my social security account, they can uh, they can literally change their address. They could do a number of different things to their to their to the record in order to, to, to have us correct that. Right, right, and you're, exactly. So if you create your my social security account, it's kind of uh, you can skip the line, and you don't have to wait long time in the office or wait a long time on the eight hundred number. Mm -hmm. You can really update your information through your my social security account. Um, make sure you go to www.ssa.gov and like I stated, uh, uh, you would want to go to the My Social, click the tab, create your account, and then as you can see, you can update your address, manage your benefits online. So you can manage how you're receiving your benefits. Direct deposit. If you want to change it and you don't want to continue with the account you have with the bank, you can change your direct deposit online. If you want to update your telephone number, if you want to uh, update your address, you can do it in the comfort of your home with the My Social Security account. You can also cheat see the cola for this year that was just announced yes that was just announced. <laughs> and there's a number of different things that that got changed in mm -hmm. the in the in the in and and uh, um, 2019 mm -hmm. and um, and I can go over some of the, the, the amounts with you mm -hmm. and we can you know and, and literally talk about about the changes like the, um, the adjustment for the cost of living for 2000 for 2019 was 2.8 percent mm -hmm. and so um, and so the the tax rate for the em, em, employee is still is still seven point six five percent, and it, and for self employed individuals is is um, still fit fifteen point three zero fifteen point three zero percent. Now um, the maximum earnings. Um, in 2018 was one hundred and twenty eight thousand four hundred dollars mm -hmm. now it is one hundred and thirty two thousand nine hundred dollars mm -hmm. and that's really and if you understand Social Security that's the maximum rate that where we were where we would literally take out FICA taxes on your on your wages now people need to understand what the FICA what wages are remember that time when you first started working and you got you got your check and you said wow I got all this money and you saw that you saw that gross amount. Then you started going down the line, and you started seeing all the different different things that was taken out of your check. You saw the federal income tax. Mm -hmm. You saw the state and local income tax, and you probably started getting madder and madder. And then you and then you yeah. then you saw this thing called FICA. Well, the FICA tax is the Social Security tax, mm -hmm. and no, and when you pay the FICA taxes, you you ultimately are paying into your paying insurance, so that you when you do retire or when you do become disabled you would be able you you will ultimately 
who could one day become insured mm -hmm. to receive those those benefits. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're looking for to become, if you're looking to retire, we're normally going to be, if you're over the age of 32, we're normally going to be looking at, out at, at looking at 10 years and see if you paid enough FICA taxes over a 10-year period in order to be insured. And and in order to, in 2019, for it, and we we look at the at quarters of, of coverage. And so uh, one quarter in, in 2019 is going to be $1,360. Mm -hmm. So you multiply that by four, I, my disability is math, but with your, if you multiply that by four, that'll be that year. That, it'll be around 5,000 and um, around 5,000, I want to say 600 and some odd dollars. But you, then you would have all four quarters for that particular year, and that would be a year where you could count towards your retirement. And remember, and when we, if you're over the age of 32, we're going to be looking at you having at least 10 of those type of years in order to, to be insured for Social Security benefits. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're disabled, we're going to be looking at another thing. Not only that, where we go, are we going to look at as, and see if you have full retired and you have paid enough about 10 years and in, 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 um, wages in order to be insured we're going to be looking at five of the last 10 years you know from the time that you became disabled to see if you were currently working during that right. time mm -hmm. and then we're then that will determine whether you're insured for Social Security disability insurance so when you're paying FICA taxes you're paying into Social Security and you're paying for your for your insurance mm -hmm. and and the way Social Security works works is that the people that are working today and paying FICA taxes today are paying the benefits of those that are, are, are that are currently working. As time you know, as time goes on, when you retire, it'll be the people that are, that are paying FICA taxes then that will be paying the benefits that you'll be receiving then. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that. <sighs> Get the right person here today, <laughs> Mr. Marshall. Now, um, how about if, say, they start receiving the benefit in their early retirement age, but they mm -hmm. still want to continue work? Has the annual income increased for the for next year because of the two point eight? Yes, actually, in the 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 the, the federal the, the annual income that you that you should um, can receive the most that you can receive and not have any reduction in your in your social security um, early retirement benefit is seventeen thousand six hundred and forty dollars last year it was seventeen thousand and forty dollars so awesome. for every yeah. so for that seventeen thousand six hundred and forty dollars for every two dollars that you go over that amount one dollar will be reduced out of uh, or reduced off your mm -hmm. off your check mm -hmm. so that's the annual earnings limit for yes. someone one that's re, you know that's retiring and normally if you're going to be retiring at, at age 62 you know then you're going to be getting about a third less of, of your social, mm -hmm. of social security than you would at full retirement mm -hmm. and normally people born after 1959 are going to be their full their full retirement age is going to be 67 yeah. now so you so once you do get to age 67 there is no earnings mm -hmm. test that means you could earn as much as you want mm -hmm. I often say you could work your brains out <laughs> Stick out your social security exactly. Check. Exactly. So, what about persons who are in their full retirement year? Um, I know this year is, is a less amount, and because of the cola, mm -hmm. they can make more mm -hmm. um, next year if you're in your full retirement year, but you also want to apply for the social security benefit. And I believe that's forty six thousand nine hundred and twenty. This year is forty five thousand three hundred and sixty, but next year um, is it will be a little bit more it's mm -hmm. going to be 46,920 and that's also applies to the SSI cola that's right that's right and that's the year that you you that you that mm -hmm. you reach for retirement mm -hmm. age mm -hmm. now now, once you do reach your full retirement age, you won't have to worry about no. any of that. Mm -hmm. Then you don't have to worry about any wages or um, mm -hmm. anything. Everything that you that everything that you earn is not gonna is not gonna affect your, right. your your social security check. Not only that, the more FICA taxes that you pay, mm -hmm. the more the, the the higher the benefit that you could potentially receive. Because mm -hmm. every year, sometimes every two years. We'll go back and recalculate your mm -hmm. benefit based on the, the additional earnings that you earn. And so, by working when you retire, you can ultimately you could ultimately also increase the monthly Social Security mm -hmm. check that you're receiving as well.
That's that's awesome. And and um, for SSI, they also get the cola. Also, that's right. Two point eight. Well, SSI mm -hmm. is going up from seven hundred and and fifty dollars in two thousand and eighteen to seven hundred and seventy one dollars in two thousand and nineteen. And normally, if for SSI people, this and um, SSI to explain it mm -hmm. is that supplemental security income is a needs based program, mm -hmm. and it's normally paid on the first of the month. And mm -hmm. we take into account your income and your resources when we determine how much um, you're going to be getting in terms of, of, of SSI. And the f most that you can get from, from su supplemental security income or SSI is 700 and now in January it's going to be $771 a, a month. Now if you are if you have a spouse, a living with spouse that has income, we may deem some of that income, some of that spouse's income, to your to, to your record, mm -hmm. and you get you might get a reduction, mm -hmm. or ultimately not be eligible for supplemental security income. Because remember, some, supplemental security income is a needs based program, yes. and it's based on the amount of income and and resources right. that you have. Mm -hmm. The maximum amount of, of, of resources that you can have in the bank or in anything that you could that you could, that you have that you. Could cash in is two thousand dollars for an individual and three thousand dollars for uh, for a couple mm -hmm. <clears throat> so th that's what you're going to be looking at when you're looking at your supplemental security income you're going to be looking at you know the, the amount of income you have and the amount of resources that you have and we look at you know whether you're you whether you're married and if you can get SSI when you're a child as if you have a disabled child as well depending on the income of the parents mm -hmm. we can deem that we will deem the income and um, the income and resources to the uh, of the parent to the child until they become age 18. Mm -hmm. Once they become age 18, then the parent's income or resources doesn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And so moving forward, we want to talk about Medicare. Medicare is for persons who are eligibility is for persons who are age 65 or have been deemed um, disabled for at least two years, 24 months. Um, so if you are not receiving benefits, not Medicare, no, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, retirement or disability benefits, and you're age 65 three months, you can apply three months before your birthday or three months after. And that's where you will go to our website at www.ssa.gov. Click the um, benefits tab, click Medicare. It's literally a five to 10 minute application. Um, basically, it's asking about if you're insured or if you continue with, if you're working and insured with an employer, and you would just have your Medicare. Now, if you are currently receiving benefits such as uh, disability or the retirement benefits, you would not have to apply. That's right. Now, now keep in mind. Now, M Medicare is is another one of those lines mm -hmm. on that paycheck that you that you that you receive that where you would be paying Medicare taxes when you're when you're paying your FICA taxes, mm -hmm. and you become insured for that as well. So when you become 65 or you become disabled mm -hmm. after and two years after from the from the date of your eligibility, you could become eligible for Medicare. And we have <clears throat> we have all this, um, different types of Medicare. We have Medicare Part A, which mm -hmm. is hospitalization insurance and that's free for everyone and that's you know and and that pays essentially for all the the uh, medicals um, for the medical um, the things the things mm -hmm. that you get in in um, in the hospital mm -hmm. and, and the doctors and everything it pays for about 80 percent of the of the of your care there and and then you also have part B which is supplemental medical insurance where if you're not in the hospital and you go go to doctor's visits or you have medical devices and things of that sort and medical things that things that you that you would need that would pay for that now that comes at a cost and normally people pay about 134 dollars mm -hmm. a month and and are out of their social security in order to pay for the Part B benefits. Mm -hmm. There's also a Part C benefit that normally will, co will cover the, the the other 20% mm -hmm. that Medicare doesn't, I mean, the other 20% that Medicare doesn't cover. And that's normally done through private insurers like um, Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, Aetna, et cetera. And, and, and they can provide you um, supplemental medical insurance to not only deal with the 20%, the, the sometimes they can they can help you pay for your, um, you know, for, for your, your subscriptions, mm -hmm. prescriptions as well. Now, 
Part D is a is a medical benefit where that specific that's specific for your prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. Now there are some people being that are um, that have low and that have lower income and lower resources that can get extra help on their on their Medicare and then so they wouldn't have to pay as high a premium for Medicare Part D as they as other people might. Now if you're getting Medicaid, and that's a state run, um, a state administered. Um, benefit, then more often than not, Medicaid is going to be paying for your Part B premiums, mm -hmm. and they will, will pay for it so that the Medicare can pay for the 80% 80 80 first, and then Medicaid will pay for for the other 20% 20, 20 of your medical coverage, and, and most of the time they cover your prescription drugs as mm -hmm. well. In order to be eligible for Medicaid in the, in the state of Illinois, you have to have income under of $1,020 a month. If you have over $1,020 a month in Medicaid, I mean, uh, and, uh, and you're trying to get Medicaid, you, you would have to spend down to that $100,000, $120, dollars <coughs> $100, in order to become eligible for Medicaid, and then Medicaid will will start taking over and paying for your um, paying for your medical coverage. Yeah, so uh, we gave you information about the the creating your My Social Security account and replacing your Social Security cards, applying for benefits online, and um, the ins and out of the the Medicare retirement and the disability as well as the SSI um, benefits. Um, we didn't have any callers today. No, we did we not. We didn't have any callers okay. today. But we appreciate you joining our show today, um, informing, uh, getting information about the different programs that Social Security offer, and really uh, applying online or going to our website at socialsecurity.gov, and then looking at the facts and gaining more information about the different programs. And if it applies to you or if you want to um, apply for benefits, you can do it in a comfort of your home, you can call our 800 number, 800-772-1213, uh, uh, the 800 number is available from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, or you can visit your local Social Security office. So, you have a plethora of information, mm -hmm. thank you Mr. Marshall, we have fun today informing you all, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good evening everyone.